How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through part five of the Goldman Sachs uh, Excel skills for business. In this part we are summarizing everything we've done in the previous tasks through a couple of visualizations. So those will be in the form of a couple of different uh, graphs that break out revenue growth, cash flow forecasting, and some operational metrics. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So we begin with this template here. We uh, and start off with the forecasting revenue. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna copy this example and we're gonna work from here just to keep the formatting uh, as similar as possible. So we can go into our data section and start looking for our revenue line in the PNL forecast, which would be this one. Copy that in and we can also change the name uh, to uh, our revenue, total revenue. Uh, and this here is basically the X axes, which will be the financial years. We can change it to this sheet as well, but it really doesn't matter too much visually. It's just to keep it consistent. And here is our forecast. So this one's very simple. It's just a bar chart or a column chart, just as uh, the prior example. Let's add a y-axis title. So we have our forecast revenue. And the x-axis is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so moving on quickly to forecasting the debt section. So once again, we're, we are essentially just selecting the, um, our new data. Let's make sure we change our titles. Uh, and this one, we need to be a line chart. So let's just start off by selecting the data. So once again, we need to go into our uh, cash flow forecast this time and look for our uh, debt line. So I think we're gonna look for our closing debt here. We start off from FY20, go all the way across. Let's just keep, keep it consistent. Let's call this the closing debt. Okay. So this is what it would look like as a column chart, but like I said, we want it to be a line chart. So uh, we can come up here and change the type. Let me make sure you guys can see it. There we go. So that's what we want. Uh, and let's just add some labels like so. Just move it up so we can see it. And then if you wanna make it bold, we can also press Command B if you're on the Mac making sure the Y title is correct. Uh, let's also uh, change the line, the, the whole line to that darker blue. So we wanna select that whole line. And then down here, we can change the color. These charts can be a little fiddly. Um, so, it's okay if it's not exactly the same as mine. Like as long as it's showing the correct figures, it's all good. Once again, I'm just copying and pasting. Here we're looking for the uh, cash flow figure. So for this, uh, we're going back into the cash flow forecast and the Y values that I will be looking at is this closing cash line, I believe. because ultimately, if you remember from the previous task, the cash flow we're generating is, uh, is being used to pay off the debt. So we want to look at this closed, closing cash flow line, closing cash line for our forecast of cash flow. So it looks something like this. Now to change this into an area chart, we can go into our line chart again, and all the way at the bottom is our area charts. So it looks, looks, should look something like this. Uh, once again, I'm gonna change the style just to keep it in that dark blue theme. And 
and I also want labels to be a bit more visible. So let's click on them once and move them in. And I believe let's make them white so we can see them over the dark blue. It's a little bit fiddly. So to change the color, we can just go into home and just like changing normal text colors. All right. And now uh, we're almost near the end. We want to make sure that our titles are correct as always. And moving into the, la the last uh, graph here. So to get these operational um, numbers, we are going to be looking at the cupcakes line and in the forecast assumptions, we are going to use a number of units sold and also average sale price. So this will really break down uh, help us visualize the breakdown of our cupcakes, uh, uh, sort of how cupcakes are contributing to our revenue and, and, uh, and also ultimately the bottom line. So here we wanna, in the same, when we're selecting data, we want to use that plus symbol to allow us to sort of have like two data inputs, two rows of data inputs. And then we're going to change type to, um, to a combo chart. And then we can actually, we can actually click this, uh, the orange section here and add a secondary axis. And here, uh, our titles are really important because uh, we're sort of representing two different things on different axes. So what I want to do is I want to add labels as well. So the, our line here represents the, uh, the average uh, sale price per unit. Just going to play around with this formatting you can kind of do it however you want like like i said the most important is the actual figures so if the figures look something like this um you're on the right track all right so to change the y-axis here I'm just going to play around with the minimum and maximum just to see how we can, how we can maybe lower the line a little bit. I'm just going to try a couple different numbers. Yeah, that's a little too low. From a presentation point of view, this is also super important. Like um, visualization matter, visualizations matter. So you can see how like by changing the scale, uh, I can, I effectively change what the, uh, the sort of what the trend really looks like. See here, it looks a little bit more flat. So let's try to stretch out the Y axis a little. Uh, so it's a bit more of an accurate representation of what's going on. I think something like this is pretty, pretty decent looking. Uh, once again, good idea to label this secondary axis here and we'll probably add a legend too. So uh, we can just come up into our chart design, add chart element. Uh, let's go secondary vertical. And 
this was our average sale price. Here is our units. So our cupcake units. And finally, we can add, um, where is it, in legend, let's add a legend at the bottom so we can just see what the uh, columns are and the line. All right, and there you have it, guys. So this is basically uh, this is sort of what the out output should look like. There you have it, everyone. That is the end of part five uh, of the Goldman Sachs um, Excel skills for business tasks. I hope you guys learned something new. Uh, keep in mind, I was doing this on my Mac, but on Windows, it should look pretty similar. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please comment them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.